All right, so deep in 15.11 just came out. So we'll be taking a look at the new bug fixes, the new features and all that type of stuff. But really quickly, just wanna clear some things up before I start. First thing is, is my upload inconsistency. Yes, I know I'm pretty inconsistent when it comes to uploading. Not sure if that's gonna change. I'm not gonna promise anything, but yeah. And the second thing is, is that this is just an overview. So I know some people, when they see overview or review in the title, they expect something that's gonna be in depth or a person's opinion after using something for a week. Well, no, this isn't it. This is just gonna be a quick glance, gonna take things at a surface level. And uh, yes, I'm using a virtual machine. So if I try to launch something, do expect it to kind of be buggy. So it's the performance is gonna be better, of course, on a real machine. So with that aside, this is deep in 15.11, and of course, I'm using a custom wallpaper. This is not the default one. The default one is the uh, ocean one right here, but the wallpapers have not really changed. They're pretty much the same thing. Uh, and if you are curious about where I get these type of abstract wallpapers, pretty sure most of you know, but uh, they're from someone called Justin Mahler, I think, M-A-L-L-E-R. So. If you like his wallpapers, uh, definitely go check them out. So really quickly, I have just a window open here. Uh, I do wanna talk about some things. So if you take a look at their website, you can see what's new, what they have to offer. So there's plenty of uh, fixes here. As you can tell, I, I, there are just too many to list. If you want, you can take a look at the website and uh, you can take a look at what exactly uh, they have fixed. Now, if we take a look at screen fetch really quickly, you'll see that it is using Kwin, and you'll also see that by dragging this, uh, the window, it did become maximized. So that's good. That's um, something that's kind of been uh, glitchy. Although let's test this uh, to the side. Okay. So they, they definitely improved the, imp uh, the performance uh, when it comes to windows and managing windows in Kwin. Uh, let's also see if this can turn blurry. Okay, so even the blur works as well, just as expected right here. So this is very nice, okay. Uh, but let's try it with the file manager, for example. So let's try to drag that, okay. So, so I can minimize and maximize without any problems, so this is good. Let's uh, test to the side. Okay, so um, if we open up another window, let's try to drag this to the left. So as you can see, there's obviously still some bugs here and there, um, but certainly you can tell that the performance is better. And again, sorry if it's kind of sluggish, I'm using a virtual machine, so. Um, okay, so we can tell that things are looking better now. The animations are good. Um, so this is the default dock that we get. Not much has changed in the dock apart from uh, showing the percentage, charging 89% and 16 minutes until full. I really like that. You know, if you're using a laptop, it's definitely something to appreciate. So the set of programs, I'm assuming they're basically the same as usual. You got all the deep in applications and then you have uh, WPS for your office. Uh, experience improvement plan, no thanks. So this looks pretty good. I've never really used this, so I'm sure people can appreciate it though. All right, so improvement. So when it comes to the file manager, I know that they've added a disk burning feature. So if you want to uh, burn a file, now I can't really do that with an image, I don't think. Um, but uh, I'm assuming if you want to burn music, let's uh, try this for example. Uh, you should have an option if you right click, I'm assuming, I don't know. I mean, this laptop that I'm using currently doesn't have any uh, disk tray or whatever it's called, so. But they did add that as a feature. They have, so really when it comes to 15.11, there really aren't many visual improvements 
Uh, but there are a lot of improvements when it comes to bugs and whatnot. So really they focused on fixing bugs and making this more stable. So uh, let's take a look at the show desktop and let's take a look at the multitasking view really quick. All right, so I'm just gonna open up the file manager and click show desktop. And as you can see, it works just like it used to initially. Um, because I know that when it comes to KDE, if you try to use the show desktop feature, instead of automatically just hiding it, it puts it at like one of the corners. So that's something to take into consideration. So that's good, I like that. When it comes to the multitasking view, you can add them here, which is nice. Uh, but they have limited it. To, uh, they limited it to four for some reason, I'm not sure. Uh, I personally don't really use virtual workspaces, uh, but this is still nice. As you can see, there is a glitch with the preview and with the wallpapers, but in my opinion, that's not that big of a deal. I'm sure it could get annoying. Let's see if this works. All right, so that works. Yeah, I'm, su I'm sure it can get annoying, but just the fact that it works, that's good. And also the dragging of icons to the dock seem to work very nicely as well. And also undocking seems to work just fine. Uh, so yeah, that's really it when it comes to the dock. I mean, you still have your uh, efficient mode. You still have the whole fashion mode, um, the size options, the plugins. Uh, one thing that I don't think you could do in the past is move these little plugins here on the left side, which is nice. And um, in case you haven't noticed, if you take a look at the system tray here, if you move icons to the right side of this line, which I'm not sure how to do this properly, there we go. Now, as you can see, only the battery is going to remain uh, visible, whereas the internet and the sound will remain hidden. So that's a nice feature uh, as well. So taking a look at the settings, uh, the settings seem to be the same. Um, also, when it comes to, to the blur effect, um, as you can see, the blur effect is slightly different uh, than when it was, if you can tell. Um, it is slightly different than what it was initially. Also, if you're on Arch, the blur effect is um, a bit different as well. I'm not sure what they're going to end up doing with that, but yeah. Um, so a new feature, Cloud Sync. I want to talk about this really quick. So you can create an account and log in and sync all your data, like your themes or uh, your corner settings, display settings, all that type of stuff. But apparently it's not supported for everybody just yet. Um, but this is something interesting that uh, I've noticed is uh, they have a, uh, a privacy policy. And if you take a look at the official promo for this, uh, you can see that uh, if you use if you choose to use this from here, uh, you can take a look at the privacy policy, which there's a bunch of stuff here you can take a look at. Um, and you can choose to accept or not. If, if you don't accept, I don't think you can use it. Um, so I'm not really going to go over all this type of stuff here. Um, but it's just it's interesting because I like this approach. I like the fact that well first of all it's they're not really forcing this it's just an option um but another thing is that they're being more transparent with this i mean you have the privacy policy right there right in front of you you have to accept it in order to continue some people don't really care about that type of stuff but other people do uh, and i like that and i think that uh it's a step forward you know if um if you want to be transparent with the users, it's good to be transparent. That's how uh, users will trust you more and whatnot. So, um, but another thing when it comes to that, that's interesting is I've noticed um, there's an end user license agreement here uh, setting. So you can take a look at it here. Um, of course you have to, before the installation, you have to accept it as well. Uh, now this has been already known since like deep in 15.8. Um, but one thing that's kind of interesting, which I'm kind of curious about myself is I thought this only applies to uh, Deepin as a distro because 
if you use this on Arch, if you use the desktop environment on Arch, you're still going to see this end user license agreement. So this is what's confusing to me and I don't really understand is, does this apply only to the distribution itself or just the software in general, including the uh, desktop environment? Because uh, like I said, before the installation or during the installation, you have to accept to it uh, before proceeding. Uh, but if you install this on Manjaro, for example, or Arch Linux, I mean, there's really nowhere to take a look at this agreement. There's nowhere to accept it. So uh, you're just installing it without accepting it. So th that's kind of confusing. Uh, if anyone knows anything about that, that would be interesting to kind of clarify. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to the settings, uh, the typical settings, um, Brightness, I would appreciate it if Night Shift had more options than just enabling it and disabling it. Maybe like having a manual type, uh, you know, option to set it up and whatnot. Uh, transparency options are the same, uh, but I, I think that the default is a bit too transparent and just in my personal opinion. Uh, here you have your default themes and whatnot and basically the default settings. Um, so let's just for fun, try to take a look at the dark theme. I just wanna see how uh, the GDK applications and whatnot are supported. So if we take back a look, or a look back at Google Chrome, um, we can take a look at it. And this is basically what it looks like with the dark theme. So it looks pretty good. Uh, KDE applications don't look the best though. Uh, they still could do some uh, improvement. So here's the image viewer. Let's just take a look at that as well. So, I mean, just at first glance, really, you know, things seem to be stable. Like I, I like the fact that, that they have been improving uh, the window snapping feature, although it's still not perfect, it's still definitely a step forward. And I'm sure they've improved a lot of um, crashing and whatnot. Oh, and also you can actually view this in full screen now. So that works as well. All right, so let's take a look at the deep in store and also the updates really quick. So if we go to the update uh, feature at the bottom, so you can um, click on update really quickly. And it's pretty nice in my opinion, it's pretty intuitive, I like it. Um, definitely a modern looking uh, system. I mean, you can't really deny that. You have your options here uh, to detect the system source, uh, auto clear package catch, uh, get notifications when you um, update and whatnot, and a smart mirror switch so you can get the fastest uh, updates. So when it comes to the uh, when uh, or the application store or whatever it's called. Um, so now you don't really have a like a region to change, like to change to the international region if you're from, uh, you know, whatever country you're from. Um, it automatically detects that. So now, as we can see here, we have the uh, main kind of like, uh, I don't know, the main application like the home page, I suppose. Uh, there still seem to be some applications here. Um, but but I mean, most of these are like standard, you know, like Spotify, uh, the top bar extension, which has been also uh, improving. Uh, we have the, I think, Facebook Messenger, Android Studio, Vivaldi, and we have the Firefox browser. Now, I'm not sure just how up to date these are. Um, if you use Firefox, Firefox, you would know if this is up to date. I use Brave. I know that it's at like a point or 65 as well. Okay, so this is up to date. That's interesting. Um, so I'm not sure how up to date everything is, but I'm really hoping that um, everything is actually up to date now. So of course, you know, the application store is the same as usual. It's got everything. It's got the uninstall option, which is very nice as well. So when it comes to up-to-date packages, again, some do seem up-to-date. Not sure if all of them are. 
Um, and there's definitely an improvement when it comes to uh, the detection of which re region you are. All right, so apart from that, you just have your basic, simple, uh, deep in applications, the standard ones. Uh, when it comes to the deep in movie, you have the, um, you can now drag subtitles and apply them to the movie and whatnot. Uh, so that's a nice feature if you uh, tend to use su subtitles and whatnot. And really quickly, just gonna open up Thunderbird, wanna see how a, another GDK application looks under the dark theme. Um, all right, so this is how it looks. This isn't really the most modern type uh, looking application, but um, it still looks decent in my opinion. Oh, and that was kind of glitchy, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, apart from this, let's see, let's try to log out or whoops, I want to see the lock screen instead, but it's the same thing. Basically you have your typical minimalistic, nice login screen. I like that. You can use also uh, the keyboard switcher and whatnot. So that's nice. And yeah, you know, I mean, it definitely seems a lot more stable um than before really like the fact that they've been focusing on the bug fixes and whatnot instead of focusing on new features because i mean come on you know at uh, one point it really was kind of getting buggy and whatnot so um but yeah i mean that's basically it you know you got your standard deep and otherwise you have uh, your previous uh features i don't know what this folder is for um, every time I review deep and I see this, not quite sure what it's for. Um, it might throw off some new users, you know, they might think, what's this? They might think, how did this even get here? I don't remember making a folder like this, but, um, yeah, it's pretty good. So that was basically just a quick glance at Deepin 15.11. Of course, if you're a regular user, you're gonna know uh, which bugs have been uh, prevalent and which bugs might have been fixed in this uh, uh, in this new version. So hopefully, your the bugs that you've been experiencing have been fixed for the most part, at least. Uh, and yeah, you know, just let me know in the comments what do you think about this new version. Do you think? they fixed enough bugs or not, I don't know. Uh, let me know. So yeah, that was basically it. And yeah, thanks for watching.